Hello and welcome to this uh, rather special interview because uh, uh, we're here with Francois and uh, Francois Schneider Electric won, I don't know whether this can be seen, but won the uh, Sustainable Development Award uh, last night at the European Utility Awards. So firstly, congratulations for Thank that. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, uh, it's always nice to be recognized for hard work uh, and so on, so that's good. But uh, you, you, you know, can you tell me a little bit about you know, the, the project that won the award in, and what you've been working on. Yeah. yeah, first of all, we are very happy to, to get this award because it's a, a hard job for reaching this, this goal and it's recognized by the industry. So it's very important for us and for Schneider because maybe, as you know, Schneider program is to provide energy to everybody. That's really the aim of Schneider Electric as, as a specialist of energy efficiency and uh, automation. And uh, not only energy, but safe, reliable and sustainable energy. So, and our solutions is clearly uh, based in this, uh, in this direction. Okay, so your solution, what is your solution? Uh, you, you just tell us a little bit uh, about that. Mm -hmm. and, more importantly, what are you hoping to influence with that solution as well? Yeah, yeah it's uh, important to know what is behind this award. So there is a hard job, but there is a, a solution which is called uh, prosumer demand side operation. So it's one part of the smart grid, what we call the demand side part of the smart grid. And for that, our platform, our solution, enable the end user to participate to the smart grid by uh, leveraging the flexibility of his major electrical loads. Okay. That's, so, that's so, the end. So, so the end customer, producer, prosumer, that, uh, that word, is the one who would be interacting with your platform. So, so what is it that they're managing on it? Are they, they're managing their, their loads or, or are they also uh, sort of managing when they sell to the grid or, or uh, you know, just if you could bring that okay. to life a little bit. Yeah, I think that has to be highlighted mm. because uh, our platform uh, targets more or less uh, large industrial, la large commercial and industrial sites where people are aware of energy but don't have too much time to spend to manage their energy. So our platform is doing that for them, of course, they have the final decision if necessary, but our platform takes the decision for them because it's a very complicated decision to take according to a, a huge number of information collecting by the platform in order to take those decisions. Either I use the energy I produce locally, I sell the energy back to the grid, or I store the energy in, in case I have a battery and so on. So there are several scenarios the platform uh, choose in for the for the end user uh, to help him to optimize his energy bill. So, so this platform is a web-based platform, and uh, so I can access it from anywhere. Let's say I'm uh, uh, I am an industrial company. A bit weird, but you know, let's go with that scenario. So I, I can uh, uh, I can manage it from anywhere. But what are, you know? Why did you get the Sustainable Development Award? You know, because everything you're saying to me at the moment, you're, well, that's just common sense. Why wouldn't you have a platform that does this, this, and this? Mm -hmm. Where does the sustainable piece come into it? Yeah, good question. So, mm -hmm. first of all, yes, it's a web-based, a cloud-based platform. Mm -hmm. So, in order to collect plenty of information like weather forecast, like uh, end-user constraints like energy tariff and so on, we need to have a cloud-based platform. It's very difficult to collect in every site all those information. So we centralize the collection of information. So it's a web-based platform. And there are mainly two aspects to il illustrate the sustainable uh, advantage you can get with this platform. First of all, is to favor the auto consumption of the local uh, the energy locally produced, which is green energy. Mm -hmm. So the end user consume energy where he, he knows where this energy comes from right. and it's green energy. Mm -hmm. So that's the first uh, aspect, helps auto consuming energy. Secondly, 
it uh, helps the utility to uh, minimize its peak during peak period by leveraging the flexibility of a certain number of sites. Okay, okay. So, so, uh, uh, so basically, um, I've got a huge demand or whatever, but there, but there, uh, but there are a number of industrial sites that I can call on to either curtail or, or take uh, um, uh, generation as 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 the need arises. So, uh, so on uh, on that note, then, uh, you know, when you. <laughs> When you deploy solutions like this, I mean, is it it's already deployed in the field, and uh, you know, and how are people finding it? Because one of the other things that is always, it is a misconception, but let's address it. You know, people say, "Oh, sustainable means not profitable." You know, but can you just tell us about the economics that some of your mm. customers are seeing with using that uh, platform like this? Okay. Yeah, that's a very good point because uh, it's uh, what was blocking this deployment in the past and which is now possible with our platform is that it helps the end user either to save money on their energy bill by uh, taking opportunity of different tariffs. That means consuming energy when the price of energy is low and avoiding consuming when the price of energy is high. And the platform helps to switch consumption from one period to another. That's the first possibility, saving money and or earning money by participating to demand response mechanism. And just I, one thing I want to highlight with our platform is that it's not the utility who asks the end user to curtail energy. It's clearly the platform which provides a block of energy to the utility. And the utility accept it or not. Right. So it's managed. Right. Okay. It's not imposed. And uh, 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 and that's important as well, isn't it? Because uh, and uh, we're sort of kind of coming to to the end of our time here, but I want to dive into it a, a, a little bit more. Is you know, it's important to have that framework to be able to do that, and it's important for the utility to be able to say, oh, actually, look, I know you're generating a lot of energy at the mm -hmm. moment, but I don't need it. You know, because. Exactly. Where is it? Uh, where is it going to go? So, so how do you see when uh, uh, when your customers are using this and uh, and the, and the negotiation with the utility and so on? You know, do you think that there needs to be more of a flexible electric market in order to really make that happen? Because if the utility doesn't need it, maybe someone else will. You know, okay. maybe we could have a scenario where you know one industrial site sells direct to another industrial site you know, yeah. is that possible yeah, that's a good point so there are two aspects in your question first aspect there are several mechanisms and the platform make an arbitrage between the most profitable mechanism for the end user mm -hmm. either uh, ta uh, tariff management or demand response or to consumption what is the best scenario for the end user the platform makes the choice by, by itself that's the first uh, first aspect and uh, second aspect um, maybe I forget uh, end of your no 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 I, I was telling whether people can sell to each other yeah exa it, exactly yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. so we leverage the platform leverage the flexibility at the end user side yeah. and provide this flexibility to the one who can provide benefit to the end user either the utility or the smart district or the smart city etc so anybody who can take benefit of this flexibility, can use it, and can connect to the platform to leverage it. And, uh, and just to finish off, I mean, what, what are some of the returns that some of your customers are seeing? You know, are they, are they uh, uh, you know, uh, can you give us some numbers if you're able to? It's very difficult, as you know, because uh, in every country you have different mechanisms. For example, in, uh, in Hawaii, in the US, you can uh, um, give something like 80, 80,000 euros for one megawatt uh, capacity, when in France it's 20, so a ratio of four. But uh, roughly in the sites we have installed in US, in Germany and in France, the return on investment is today between five and seven years. But in some better case, it could uh, come to, to three years. So 
five and seven euros per day per, per, per it's not per year surely no it's five, five you spend you yeah. have to invest yeah. the end user has to invest yeah. has to pay fee for being managed and get some uh, incentive back either for participating to demand response or for decreasing his energy bill so that's nice. the, the, the balance between those two uh, spendings and earnings perfect Perfect. Thank, thank you very much for explaining that. Thank you for going into the detail and congratulations once again for, yeah. for, for, uh, for winning the award. Uh, so this has been another interview at Enturiety with uh, uh, while we've been here at European Utility Week. And uh, this particular topic is very interesting because it's one of those key enablers to make the electric market work, to uh, you know get distributed generation onto the grid in an efficient way. So I'm very pleased we had the chance to talk to you, Francois. Thank you for joining. Can I say us. one yeah. word more. You can. Okay, it's just I, uh, just to highlight what you are saying, mm -hmm. it's to uh, to modify the energy landscape by allowing the end user to participate. Uh, and being a really an actor of this energy landscape. That's uh, the aim of this platform. Thank you. Adam. Perfect. Thank you very much, Francois. And thank you as well for watching.